Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing a bookshelf reorganization. So I started this video back in July, which was when I got my new bookshelf. I love it a lot, it's very pretty. <laughs> and I'm just voiceover Rebecca is here to talk you through the process. So I did have a small shelf and then my bigger shelves and they were actually split by age range. And I kind of did a similar thing. And so you can see I move kind of more childhood books of mine to like the back because on the Calyx shelves you can double stack. So kind of childhood nostalgic books I put back there because I don't really care about them being at the center of attention, but I'm keeping them for reasons. <laughs> and then obviously I have to sort out all of the books. I, I sorted them by genre, uh, but I kind of split the fantasy into YA fantasy and adult fantasy and then kind of the other genres. I kind of just stuck them all together. So then I have them split up. So these are books I'm not interested in really anymore. Then we have our Robin Hobb, all of my adult fantasy, V.E. Schwab. Then I have like Percy Jackson, Alice in Wonderland, nonfiction, YA fantasy. These two are horror books. I do not read a lot of horror. Then mystery, thrillers, uh, historical fiction. Beartown is like an adult contemporary, YA contemporary, then I don't really know what Kingdom of Back is, and then sci-fi. And then up at the top there I have Cassandra Clare, that is exactly the same as it's always been. And so now it is time to actually put the books on the shelves. So the first priority for me when organizing bookshelves is always that an author's work stay together. And I kind of wanted to use my new bookshelf as a place for me to film and therefore I wanted my favorite books there. And so I put all of V.E. Schwab on that. So even though not all of her books are adult fantasy, I still wanted all of her books together. Robin Hobb, she also gets this place on this shelf because again, another favorite author of mine. Then for the books that are going on the bottom shelf, sorry, I have to hold it with my, the phone with my hand, so it's shaky, but I just put a load of adult fantasy down here. So, you know, N.K. Jemison, Brandon Sanderson, etc. Then I had trouble trying to decide what to put in this gap by V.E. Schwab. One day I want the whole series to be filled there, but in the end I decided to go with Witchlands because that is a favorite series. Then before I could fill in all of the books on my YA shelf slash other genre shelf, I first had to clear off a load of like knickknacks that I have because I they were just everywhere. So as I said, First priority is always that an author stays together, so you'll see in a minute I do that with Marissa Meyer. And then kind of my second priority is genre. I like to keep genres together, but sometimes like with YA fantasy and adult fantasy, because I have a lot of both of them, I do split those up by age range as well. Whereas not really with sci-fi because I only have one technically adult sci-fi book. And then kind of what I do then is organize by size a lot of the time. So I'll try and put the bigger books on the edge, but I don't have too many like oddly shaped <laughs> paperbacks and I do mostly own paperbacks.
So then as you can see, I kind of had the shelves that I wanted filled up. So these books were kind of the leftover books. They're books that I really need to unhaul, but for some reason still have. Mostly because I don't have anywhere to unhaul them right now, but soon enough I will probably unhaul them. And so I just simply double stacked those, so I put them behind the other YA fantasy because most of them are YA fantasy, but a couple are dystopian and stuff like that. Hello everyone, so you have seen the start of this video which was the bookshelf reorganization and now I'm going to just give you like a quick tour of them. I'm not going to like go in depth about each book, I might say a small bit on each but not too much. But just a couple things, number one I have actually already filmed this bit, <laughs> I filmed it back in July, it is now August and since then when I originally filmed it I have number one reorganized things again, just a small bit, nothing major but i made a couple small changes. And number two, I've also bought a lot more books. So I decided um, that footage is already out of date, so I'm gonna just quickly do it again. I will be holding my phone to film. My hand is not the steadiest, so I'm sorry about that. So first up we have my old shelves. So these are the Calyx ones from Ikea. They're kind of more like storage units because you can get drawers for them or boxes for them or also you can use them as shelves so they're handy uh but I do I think I prefer the Billy bookcases these are like slightly more sturdy I think I do have two just top on top of each other I think these are like more sturdy but I do just prefer the look of the Billy bookcase I don't really like having them split in the middle down here we just have drawers this has a lot of CDs and also a lot of Taylor Swift CDs as you can see red and uh, fearless. And then I also have all of my Nintendo games. I do still play that occasionally, I'm not gonna lie to you. And I have just like a load of chargers and I think in this one is just an absolute mess. Like there's a lot of like old cards and stuff, so just like crap. And then in these I again I just have random stuff. I have a load of bags in here. If I run out of space for books, which is not gonna happen anytime soon, but they will be moved. So I've kind of made this shelf more of the YA whereas the other one is more adult, which is very similar to how I had it last time, but with the smaller shelf. So down here we have the sci-fi, I would suppose. So we have the Chaos Walking trilogy, which is a sci-fi. I really enjoy this series. I read it a couple of years ago. I want to reread it. Then we have Scythe. I was okay with those. Illuminae. I loved Illuminae. The other two were kind of just copies. Then one that doesn't fit in is Alice's Adventures in Wonderland. Definitely the odd one out. And also Disney Cinderella. They're kind of just there to fill it out. And we have an absolutely remarkable thing, which is technically adult. At least over here anyway. I'm not sure about like US or anything. But it is adult in my bookstore. I decided to keep all the sci-fi together. So, which I only have one adult sci-fi. So that's why that's there. And then we have all of Marissa Meyer books. I loved Renegades. Supernova is like the worst finale of a book ever. <laughs> yeah. And then, as you can see, in the back, I also just have some older books, kind of more nostalgic books for me. So I have the Twilight series, which these are like the like red sprayed edges editions. I'm not going to take them out because they're in the box and they're impossible to get back in, but they're like really pretty. And then I also have the Stardust books, which I loved these growing up. I don't have book five and six. I never read book five and six. I know that my cousin has them and one day I will steal them <laughs> and read them, despite the fact I'm way too old for them. Back there we have Twilight journals. <laughs> uh, I did go through a Twilight phase. I, and I never even used those. So now they just like sit there. And then I have a lot of old doll books. Then the next two shelves are contemporary and also just random stuff. <laughs> to be honest, this shelf is a little messy, but I'll get to it. So over here we have my contemporary books. So we have John Green. I really want to read his new book, With the Fire and High, The Henna Wars, and then all my Alice Oseman. I love Radio Science a lot. And over here, as I said, this is slightly more random. So 
This one that is turned backwards uh, is the one that I haven't read because I decided to do that. I just, which not a lot of books are turned around because I'm pretty good at reading the books I am. So this is Small Favors by Erin A. Craig. I only bought it a couple days ago. As you can see, her first book is right beside it. So I'm probably gonna wait until like October and like read it for a spooky season. So these are like technically horror, but like they're not that like horror-y. They're like pretty calm. So like if you want something that's not terrifying, I would recommend these. And then we have kind of more mystery thrillers and then historical fiction, nonfiction. And in the back for these boxes is the Harry Potter books, I don't really want them on display, but they were a present from my mom to both me and my sister, so like they don't just belong to me anyway, so I can't really get rid of them. And then also I have a Bible back there. It's your first Bible. Uh, I got it for my christening off my godmother and it's on my bookshelf. I am not religious anymore, but um, yeah. And then back here, as you can see, I have a lot of Kathy Cassidy and I may be doing something with these books soon. And so then we move up and this is like the second shelf and these are all like YA fantasy. I'll just like skip up for a second. I have all my Sims expansion packs up there and then this is exactly the same. If you've been watching my recent videos, you will realize that I keep moving these. I move them over to my other shelves. Uh, to sit in front of while filming because they're so pretty but they stay up there because I have to keep them all together so yeah those haven't changed down here is my YA fantasy so these two are Furyborn and Kingsbane by Claire Legrand I'm planning on reading this soon I have Spin the Dawn and Unravel the Dusk I I'm unsure which covers I prefer whether I prefer the US or UK I have the US ones because they came out before the UK ones did but I mean I love these anyway but I also love the new ones so I'm not gonna buy a second copy they were only four stars like if they were five stars I would totally buy the new copies but I'm gonna just leave it <laughs> then I have the Raven Cycle which I love I have Call Down the Hawk and I have Mr. Impossible which I did not love at all and then I have To Kill a Kingdom and then over here we have Lee Bardugo and holly black again this shelf is the same because but it was just like i think maybe like two shelves lower before so then behind those books i have books that i actually want to unhaul so i have the maze runner series i have the nevernight chronicles and i have throne of glass i'm going to unhaul them in a secondhand bookstore that i know of but that's down where my college is and i haven't been there in over a year and a half so I'm waiting until I'm back in college and then I will start slowly bringing them down because I couldn't, I'm not the person who could like walk in with like a huge bag of like 20 books and be like, I don't want these. Can be said for the books that are back behind the other YA fantasies. So we have the Red Queen series of Carry On and Wayward Son. These ones I'm not going to unhaul just yet, I don't think. I'm still deciding whether I want to read the last book. And then this is Sadie, but it is in French. That was an accidental purchase. <laughs> I did French in school. Maybe one day I'll read it in French. Don't think so. And then I have the Three Dark Crown series. And then I have Simon vs. Homo Sapiens Agenda, The On the Offbeat, and The Astonishing Color Up After by Emily X. Arcan. So this is my brand new shelf that I just got. As you can see, the top three shelves are completely empty and there's small spaces in the bottom three. But I love this. I just, I love this shelf so much. <laughs> well, up here I have the evidence of me going and watching musicals so i have like the tickets to wicked and i also have like my ticket to lay miz they won't stand up anymore the he shows like curl them and then in here i have this print of jude and carden that i got when i went to the was it the king and queen tour that holly back and cassandra claire did and yeah it's really pretty i don't love the cruel print series i do enjoy it but like i mean it's a really pretty print so i'm not gonna complain then on this second shelf, I have just a load of random stuff, to be honest. So I have this light, which is very cute. I have a little unicorn in a teacup, as you do. I have some candles, uh, just a load of little like figurines and stuff. I have my little octopus who's mad right now. <laughs> they thought it was a Christmas present from my sister. She has great taste. Then I have a huge R that my granny got me for Christmas when I was younger, and that is baby me. Obviously very adorable what happened 
and then again some more like weird figurines and stuff like a lot of these are like presents that have been given by people like do you know when you like go on holidays and you just buy something random to give to your friend <laughs> yeah that's what a lot of these are and then i have a, it's a mug shaped as a cauldron and then i get back here again more stuff from when i went to see holly black and cassandra player it's a wicked king tote bag so then we move down and we have all of my marvel stuff so these box sets my mother has been like gifting them to me for like christmas and birthdays and stuff and so i now have like all of the movies on dvd if i ever choose to do so but i also have disney plus and then this is spider spud he is a mr potato head with a spider-man suit on and i got him from my aunt not that far back to be honest she basically collected mr potato heads i think it was honestly she liked them more than her kids did but she ended up with a whole load of Mr. Potato Heads and a whole load of different costumes for them. And I was down staying at their house and she said, you like Spider-Man? I was like, I do. And she just basically was like, do you want a Spider-Man with Mr. Potato Head? And I was like, yes, yes I do. And so I then nicknamed him Spider Spud and the rest is history. I also have one of these posters from like Avengers Infinity War from going to the cinema. And it has Thor on it, which is obviously great. I don't really care about the Guardians that much. It has Thor. And now, finally on to the books. So this shelf is mostly V.E. Schwab. One day it will be full of only V.E. Schwab. And I can't wait for that day. It's going to be glorious. But for now, it has a couple of other things. So we'll start over here with the odd one out, which is Bear Town. That actually was on my other like weird stuff that doesn't really fit <laughs> anywhere because it's an adult contemporary, the only one I own. But then I got small favors, so I had to move that because I couldn't separate the Aaron and Craig books. So it got moved over here, which it does not fit over here at all because all the books over here are fantasy. But I did give it five stars, which a lot of the books on this are like books that I really like. So then I have the Witchland series by Susan Dennard. I finally, finally have two covers that match. <laughs> I would love to have the first two in these editions. I love the little paperbacks that are like this, but like you cannot find them anywhere. They have gone out of print because they have the other paperbacks. It's impossible to get like matching editions. And also they never printed Sight Witch in the UK, which is a whole other issue. <laughs> so yeah, so I have completely different editions. So this is the old US uh, cover. This is, I don't even know what kind of a cover this is because this was way bigger than a normal US paperback. And then this is the new US paperback. And these are two UK paperbacks. And they're so pretty. I love the font on them. <laughs> and I also just like, I love these editions. The only problem with these though is the if I did get the first two, like the first one is actually like really ugly. <laughs> So we have Vicious and Vengeful. I actually got this Vicious cover because I prefer it to the UK one, which I think is an unpopular opinion. I see a lot of people really like the UK covers of Vicious and Vengeful, but I definitely prefer the US ones, which is why I got them. That's going to leave me with a problem when the third book eventually comes out, because I'm going to have to wait for ages for the paperback to come out. So yeah, um, backfiring on me there. And I'm definitely gonna have a similar problem with A Dark Shade of Magic because if you didn't know she is writing a sequel trilogy to these called Threads of Power and they're gonna have different like main characters but the cast of these is still going to be very important and are going to be seen and <laughs> again as I said when that eventually comes out I'm gonna have to wait for ages for the paperback. Well actually I'll probably be fine because I actually have the UK hardback. <laughs> of A Darker Shade of Magic, so I'll be fine. <laughs> then I have this Savage Song and Our Dark Duet, the UK covers, which it sickens me because I bought these and then like immediately after they announced like the new US, I think they're US covers, but they're so pretty because I didn't like any either of the covers. I didn't like these ones or I didn't like the US ones, but I chose these ones because they were easier to get and I honestly did prefer them slightly. <laughs> And then they released the new ones, which are so pretty in my opinion. And yeah, so annoying. I will probably one day get them, but I'm saving, so not right now. <laughs> then I have the Near Witch, which is the reprinted version that has 
these awesome sprayed edges. And then I have the Dark Vault, which is Archived and the Unbound. I have Bridge of Souls. I need to get the first two. I listen to them on audiobook, but I want to have them, so I own every Fijua book. I also need to get the Shades of Magic comics, but I think there's a box set coming out of those soon. So I'll just get those, and then I'm also getting the EO comic uh, from Alima Crate. So yeah, and then I have the Everyday Angel collection. Again, I read these on audiobook, but I bought them anyway. Then I have the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, the Waterstones edition with these gold edges and all of that. And then I have a Dark Shade of Magic. This is the collector's edition. It has the black dust jacket. This is its dust jacket. I got these because I bought the Illumicrate second and third book, even though I don't have the first. And so I wanted to just have a set of hardbacks. And so that's how that happened. Moving on to my absolute favorite shelf. It's the Robin Hobb shelf. So we have the Fire Zero trilogy, the Live Ship Traders. We have the Tony Man trilogy and we have the Rainwild Chronicles. And then we have the beautiful illustrated editions. They are absolutely gorgeous. I cannot get over them. I do still need to get the very last series, but I'm in no rush because I still have to read these four, which if you've noticed, I do turn around the books that I haven't read, but I didn't turn these around because they're just so pretty to have the shelf all <laughs> done like this. It is just beautiful. I love this shelf so much. I mean, I can't really say much on these shelves because they're all Robin Hobb. So these are the 25th anniversary editions. They are illustrated. They have foiling on them. So this one is like bronze. The next one is like silver. The last one is like gold. And they do have illustrations in them. They also have like the map beautifully done. So they're illustrated and they're beautiful. The third one though, the like just so you know, the third one does have like this straight back on it. Whereas the second and first one have a more rounded edge. And I think that's just because you literally could not bind this one into this shape because it would just not be stable. Because even this one is like a little flimsy, I think. Like, cause there's just so many pages and they're pretty heavy pages. Like they're like thick paper. And so I think that's why it's like this because it literally just could not hold the pages. That's my personal like thoughts on it, but I could be wrong. I don't I don't know anything about the book process, but that's like the reason in my head that would make the most sense. Then down here we have my last shelf. So again, this is mostly adult fantasy with the exception of the Percy Jackson series. So I promised that I'd read the Heroes of Olympus this year and I still have not picked them up. Then we have the Poppy War and this that is turned around is the Dragon Republic. I need to read that. We have the Winter Night Trilogy. These were all five stars. I really enjoy this series. Then we have the David Bad Trilogy, which is a new favorite series. I read it all this year. So a four star and two five stars. <laughs> then we have the Mistborn Trilogy. And these were all four stars in popular opinion. Then we have Warbreaker, which I literally finished yesterday. I think I have an unpopular opinion because I like this more than I like any of these books. So I'm being controversial. <laughs> Then we have the Broken Earth Trilogy, which again is another series I read this year. I've been going a bit mad for the adult fantasy this year. And then the last book I have is The Ruin of Kings by Jen Lyons. And again, that is another series I want to start. So that is my brand new shelf. I love it a lot. I love how I've organized it and I think it makes a very pretty background for me. And I cannot wait to fill the top shelves. I will have to like, it's currently like not secured and that is why I chose to like fill the bottom. I'm gonna have to try and figure out how to secure it probably uh, before I start like getting up there because that's gonna make it unstable again because my floorboards are not level. So that is why all of it is like down here where it like makes it more stable. And I do also just sit down while I'm filming so it makes sense anyway. And here's my old shelf. So I do hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to subscribe and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.